the one thing that I learned is at least some part of my job, one way or the other, was always related to sales. Always, I always had to sell an idea or a vision to either a customer or to a teammate or to an external stakeholder. So sales, so I have done different shape and form, made, different setting, made, and which is where I feel I can add some value, probably. First and foremost, situation, you know, for the first and foremost lesson that I learned outside the B school when I started, you know, my career with Uber was around. Our no can teach you a lot more, you know, than you can imagine. So, when I joined Uber, we have we Uber used to have roughly twenty five percent market share in the in in the cab sharing industry, in the ride sharing industry. Product was superior. Still, we didn't get growth. We were paying more to the drivers in terms of incentives. We were still not getting you know, them to shift platforms from Ola to Uber. We had huge customer discounts. So, if Ola used to pay X, you'll always be ten percent higher. And still, the demand wasn't coming in. So overall, the platform was stagnant. And then, when I came in, this entire question, the entire team, leadership team, as well as the entire organization, was focused on why can't we gain market share despite doing so much? If we are the better product, we are spending more money, we are giving more money to both sides of the marketplace. How can we gain market share? So, I think the challenge there was how can you go to a real customer and understand what the real problem is? For us, the real customer was actually our driver. Customers come later. In any marketplace, your supply comes first. You solve for them, you'll always solve for the demand. To get the supply, the demand will always fall. You always need to fund one side. The supply side should be funded first, in my opinion. So for us, the key was drivers keep problem solve करनी है, but problem है क्या? What is really the problem? You know that you can solve for them. So we went around them. We went to the Ola office, spoke to hundred odd drivers who were never planning to sign up with Uber. And the one thing that we understood for them was, so it was always about asking more. They said, "Oh, Ola has this great community." I said, "Why is it important?" They said, "Because any time I have an issue in using the app, and remember, this is 2014, 15, when your first time talking to drivers, you can okay. Today we think of it as very ubiquitous. You know, every driver has a smartphone. At that time, it wasn't the case." It was very difficult for drivers to even understand how to unlock. Who navigation used to be? Who blue triangle? आता है उसपे क्लिक करोगे तो navigation नहीं है. For them to imagine how can I use a new app and start a livelihood was very difficult. And a lot of people were coming from villages, first time smartphone users. For them, this community that Ola had was a very strong, you know, platform because they knew कि अगर कुछ भी problem हो, I can call up. I can call up someone and they'll help. So for us, the real challenge was how can we get that community in place. That was one. So what we did going forward was we created this huge field sales team. We used to have a seven eight people team. We expanded it to seventy. We created these field this field team, keeping two things in mind. One, they do not need to be only onboarding people onto the platform. They don't need to be a field sales team in essence, but they also need to be the first part of that community. So if driver tomorrow has a problem, he can call up these my field sales agent and ask them. So if my app is not working, then what can I do? I don't have payment. I don't know what I can do. Second thing that we did was we made the onboarding much faster. If a lot of people are taking this hassle of getting onboarded on my platform versus say another platform, I need to make sure that it is worth their time. So what else can I provide them? I made the onboarding faster. The second thing that I did was any driver who was coming to Uber, उनको ना पूछा अच्छा आप अपने बाकी friends को क्यों नहीं refer करते? वो भी तो गाड़ी चलाते हैं, मैंने वो सर Ola में चलाते हैं, तो आप यहाँ पे referral डालो, we'll give you money, and we'll make you a driver ambassador. So a lot of these people took pride in becoming their community leader, wherein they said, okay, you know, I'm the person who's getting ten friends from my village to the city, helping them earn a livelihood. That was a very big empowering moment. and that all came through a lot of focus group discussions that we did today this was critical and which is why we created these driver ambassadors who could then sell the idea of uber on our behalf and also of course get a monetary benefit to these customers so that's that was one problem that we started seeing so we built that community starting first with our field agents then with these driver ambassadors and then creating an entire platform around them where they could ask questions they could get these questions answered and hame bhi sara information nahi samal what critical issues they are facing which brings me to the next problem i think there is something that a lot of you would have seen a leaky bucket is always something that nobody likes why because 
when you look at customer acquisition you get them on the platform then something happens there's a huge you know poor word of mouth there's customer churn and that results in higher acquisition costs it's a problem because a lot of people people who are particularly bringing in the revenue the team which is driving sales they find it very frustrating and the reason for that is aap log leke aaye wo log thode time baad chale gaye fir aap naye log leke aaye and beyond the point there's you know the target segment is limited right ab kitne logon ko leke aao platform pe agar hum retain nahi kar sakte a lot of organizations make the mistake that this blank that you see in between is probably slow pace of adoption of 100 people ko leke aaye 50 have adopted immediately the rest 50 will probably come after some point of time that's not the case that's not how it works a lot of people when they come in if they don't find what they are looking for on your platform they will leave and it is important to find that actionable item this key over you will act for us the real problem was over was onboarding some 500 drivers a week we came in we built this community that i just talked about we started onboarding 1000 drivers per week but only 70% of them used to do their first trip so 30% of my effort is anyways wasted and only 55% reached the 50th trip so 45% of the people have left before they can give me any return on the investment that i have made on their onboard my first trip cost was around 40 dollars and it used to also nullify the effort that i am doing in community building main 50 logon ko leke aaya usme 20 agar chhod jate hain mera platform to community is never going to get better right so the first trip to 50 trip journey was broken so the reason any driver used to stick with us or would have stuck with us versus say ola platform which anyways is paying more has a better app that's been built for india unka app to india ke liye built tha hamara nahi tha ours was a global app which was being adapted to it the customer service that you offer to your driver was p0 it wasn't about the money you pay them 2000 rupees ola pays you 2100 rupees they'll still come to you by the way you go to some of the cities in india where we had the leading market share after one one and a half years despite paying more money the drivers did not switch platform and you know what was the key there the respect with which you treat drivers in an uber station was super important was the most critical piece for them it was nothing else the exact feedback and i'll tell it verbatim was uber ke office mein hamare se izzat se baat hoti and that is what these people are looking for you ultimately can offer them 10 things but if you are not giving them the one thing that you know they so desire in their lives you think of these these people are coming from probably some of the sections of the society where not a lot of people treat them well so if someone treats them well someone understands what the need of this customer is that tricks that you know trips the favor uh, trips the tables in your favor and that is what we do so we up leveled the driver journey we redesigned our entire support center we got a few drivers and then we asked them acha aapko kya chahiye what did what should we offer they said ek to aapko support accessible nahi so you know we had this field sales team i spoke about we made all of them equipped to handle support queries we gave them smartphone applications we designed that we made sure that they could log in issues we created a backend team that could solve them. so instead of having one support center in delhi and cr we had 75 support centers in delhi and cr each of these person became a support executive wherever they were we tied up with vehicle finance of you know vehicle dealerships where we put in our people people could go there and get things so ease of access to support was first second was making sure that we up level the experience our centers we redesigned we got these nice metal chairs we got people serving them tea and coffee you know there was we made sure that you know our security and our agents are trained by someone in the hospitality industry to treat these drivers the way they deserve these are our customers in the and they needed specialized training and we made sure they get from the best in the industry hospitality industry is better aapko kahin pe bhi nahi milega customer service right if you go to a good restaurant the way they treat you that's how the driver should be treated that just changed the game we started recording customer feedback and that just made sure that drivers are so 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 happy about us we started getting an average of 4.8 4.9 out of 5 on our customer support experience the third thing that we did was payment statements for us was something that on both platforms was difficult 
ड्राइवर्स फाउंड इट वेरी डिफिकल्ट दे गो टू अदर ड्राइवर्स टू अंडरस्टैंड सर मेरा पेमेंट आया इसमें मेरे को पर ट्रिप कितना मिला है कमीशन कितना गया है इंसेंटिव कितना है ऑल ऑफ दैट वॉज डिफिकल्ट सो वॉट वी मेक श्योर वॉज वी गॉट इट इन अ वे वेर इन वी सेट ओके यू नो ऑल दीज ड्राइवर्स वाई डोंट यू कम ऑन बोर्ड Tell us what your problems are. We organized these focus group discussions again, and we recreated the entire payment statement in a video, where we told them, okay, this means this, this means if. And despite this, you have a problem. Just send us a message on this WhatsApp number, and we'll resolve. So we created all of these things just to make sure that the handholding from first trip to the fiftieth trip, which builds a lot of confidence in the driver, right? He's getting payments on time, great support experience, Uber is treating me with respect. All of those things. make him stick to the platform please what exactly do they want and the first thing was that hamare yahan pe to acche se treat all others not treat us well or some of the other players in the market don't treat us well the third thing was in the consistency of delivery is super important ola prime when it was started with cars that ola's leasing company used to own which meant they could control the behavior of the driver to a large extent which meant they could always talk about ओला बहुत अच्छा है लेट सर्विस वॉट कुड बी टू आई थिंक द रियल चैलेंज देयर वॉज बिकॉज वी वर लिमिटेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट यू डिड नॉट ओन द सप्लाई इट वॉज अ मार्केट प्लेस राइट ड्राइवर इज फ्री टू डू वॉट यू प्लेस देन हाउ डू यू मेक श्योर दैट यूर एबल टू कंसिस्टेंटली डिलीवर इन अ मार्केट प्लेस वाइल मेंटेनिंग द ब्रांड वैल्यू दैट वॉज द चैलेंज सो वॉट वी लॉन्च वॉट वी डिड वॉज वी मेड श्योर दैट वी लॉन्च समथिंग दट्स कॉल्ड ऊबर प्रेमियर And बहुत ज्यादा प्रॉमिस नहीं किया आप उतना ही प्रॉमिस करो जितना यू कैन डिलीवर एंड दैट्स वॉट इज की ऑलवेज यू प्रोमिस वॉट यू कैन डिलीवर एंड देन यू डिलीवर वॉट यू प्रोमिस एंड डिलीवर इट कंसिस्टेंटली डोंट ओवर प्रॉमिस एंड अंडर डिलीवर बिकॉज कस्टमर आफ्टर पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम स्टार्ट फीलिंग चीटेड यू माइट बी प्रोमिसिंग द सन एंड यू माइट बी डिलीवरिंग द मून बट द कस्टमर इज नॉट आस्किंग फॉर यू नो ऑल ऑफ दैट इज आस्किंग फॉर जिस कंसिस्टेंसी थोड़ा दो हमेशा दो When we launched Uber Premier, we just said three things because we knew everything else we could not control. So we said great drivers, which was based on driver rating. We said zero cancellation fee because we could refund that. And then there were clean cars. So we made sure we selected some six hundred, seven hundred drivers who were applying on the platform, not our supplier. And we went to them and we started auditing their cars, giving them car cleaning services, giving them you know perfumes on our from our, on our expense initially. then making sure that they can deliver a good experience to the customer now for a driver what does it mean a driver bar bar hi kyu karega bhai usko koi incentive nahi hai na he is when you talk of a leased car which ola owns there the driver is getting a fixed salary and all of that so uska ek fixed incentive hai yahan par he had nothing so what could we offer the driver in this case we promise priority support which we built out we promise better riders because obviously due to the price difference you know the driver prof- uh, the rider profile got elevated mostly corporate customers and of course because of the pricing higher earnings drivers and riders started loving it because whatever you were delivering thoda tha magar consistent it always started building the product big grew 24x in a period of 12 months that's how fast it scaled than it did and the biggest reason when we went every time we went back we spoke about even the customer surveys that we did was all about ki aapko har trip pe driver ki car clean milti hai not ek baar apni pichli panch trip mein kya har baar aapko driver car clean milti hai so the consistency was super important this is the next lesson that i have always you know felt is the most critical for any leader i believe and you can obviously you know a lot of people will be you will have different thoughts so we can talk about it but leader's most critical job is to make himself redundant in any role and for that he has to invest in his team to make sure that some day they can grow and replace him take a moment to absorb my task is to make sure that my team can replace me some day 
and I'm redundant. I'm no longer needed in the organization. It might sound counterproductive to a lot of people, but that is ideally how you groom people to replace you and then you take the next step, right? And there are three things that go into it. If and these are, when I discuss it with my mentors and with my coaches, these are three things that always, I believe I stand by. One is trust. I should trust my team to make sure they do the right thing. They do the right thing. I have to coach them. I should be okay with them making mistakes. But I'll never, you know, not let them make mistakes and not learn. Growth is more important. Second is honesty, which means I have to be very honest about the feedback that I need to provide them. Be firm. Don't be disrespectful, but always be honest about the feedback. Because if you're not providing it, you're doing a great disservice to that person as well as to yourself. And the third was empathy. The inputs that your team provides is always far more than the outputs that you will get. And that, that is critical. A lot of the factors, a lot of the changes, particularly in marketplace businesses, are external. A lot of drivers would not want to drive. Right? Now, Isme, the person who's handling my marketplace in Uber has no control. He can't do anything. So, but he has he made sure that his inputs are right? Has he planned well? Has he executed the controllables well? That is what matters. And that's where I think the loyalty that you build through these aspects with your team, that's what makes the team go above and beyond for you. And that means they, some, they strive to grow. And if they strive to grow, you grow. And that's how everyone in the organization moves ahead or moves forward. The next one is perfect storms. This goes back to my experience in UK. I was working on this product called Amazon Flex. I was based out of London for a year and a half. And there was this, I used to handle UK, Germany, bunch of these markets. And this Amazon Flex is again a gig economy model. So what, ha- and what I want to tell here is perfect storms happen. Sometimes there are uncontrollable things that will happen. They will throw the business like completely out of sync and you will not know what has happened. But you need to stay afloat. You need to be focused. Okay, this is, you know, what I'm doing. How can I get out of the situation somehow? So in 2021, Brexit happened, which means a lot of the labor that used to work in UK, a lot of the people who used to perform, you know, blue collar jobs in UK left. They were, a lot of them were from other countries in Europe. They left. Post-COVID, other businesses started coming up, which means that demand for labor now suddenly shot up. It meant higher inflation. It meant a labor shortage in the gig economy space for Amazon Flex. Amazon Flex is, think of it as Uber for last mile delivery. So anybody can pick a car and deliver a package. That labor just went up. And we had no tools that could get us out of the situation. You didn't anticipate it. In COVID, the business had gone up like this and we had faced no issues. Because there was a lack of jobs, Amazon's business was growing. Everybody wanted to work with Amazon. So we had all the supply availability that way. Suddenly, yes, ago, nobody knew what to do. There was no product preparedness. There was no operational preparedness. Team was working 16 hours a day, seven days a week, which in Europe was unheard of. So what did we do? I think the picture on the right, I don't know how many of you are Harry Potter fans, it's always very relevant in life. Uh, never be scared of asking for help. I think mean, that the reason I learned this lesson was because first one month I did not ask for it. The way issue was, I laga not talk I did not talk about it. I did not discuss it with my seniors, with my peers or anyone. And eventually what happened was I started facing a lot of uh, heat because things weren't changing. So always be okay with asking for help. The second thing is, in a marketplace, your product's price is determined by the marketplace, the customer. You cannot set the price because there's a large customer community out there that basically knows what value your product delivers and they'll pay you for it. The economy price is set. It's always up and down and it settles at the price which makes more sense. So for us, we knew that the market the price was going up. It was happening across the world back. So asking for help was fine. 
they knew that the market price was going up so we also had to shift prices we started communicating making sure that the leader expect leadership expectation right up to you know someone like andy jassy is set itna hi price yahi dena market mein yahi price set ho gaya abhi bata par aap this is what you have to pay we experimented we failed i think learning from those experiments was super important ultimately we end came up, we came up with an algorithm 3 months later that could solve pretty much 80% of our problems and that did it but during those 3 months this constant communication of why you are failing or why you are underperforming why what has changed externally that over communication was very much needed and then ask for help okay i need someone to bring, you know create this algorithm for me i need someone to automate these few things for me and that is something that will always keep you afloat be never be scared of asking for help in any setup next thing is customer inertia and this is a very critical you know you can say scale issue that i have seen it was a watershed moment in my career february of 2017 there were strikes in uber delhi and delhi business it came to a grind stand still it took nothing mostly because we reduced driver incentives the protest then spread across all top 7 cities so delhi bombay calcutta mumbai hyderabad pune chennai everywhere driver protests from anywhere between 7 days to 20 days longest protest in the history of the uber globally and this is all because we reduced incentives over the next one year we went from minus 100% negative inflows to 0% negative inflows and there were no disruptions during those four weeks massive protests for a change from minus 100 to minus 40 minus 100 to 0 no 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 challenges at all we went smoothly peacefully nothing happened similarly in misho when we launched superstore for close to 8 months sales were stagnant nothing changed but within one month for post that sales grew 3x and in the next 3 months another 2x so the question you need to be asking yourself is there was what was blocking this growth or what was happening and the real answer lies in customer inertia customer is basically stuck to what he's getting and he would never want to change immediately you need to push the customer to change with a new solution with a new product or whatever but also give the customer time to adapt in both of these problems as i'll walk you through it the biggest issue was we did not give the customer the time to adapt to what we were selling or what we were promising so when you look at when you look at uh, uber's case we reduced incentives drastically a lot of people were dependent on you know this money when you suddenly take the incentives down in four weeks none of them got time to adjust to this aaj agar main aap me se kisi ko bhi ye bolu hypothetically aapki salary suddenly next month half ho jayegi you would not like it why because even if this were to happen due to a structural change you would want all of this to happen in a manner such that it is giving you the time to adjust right we did not give our customers the time to adjust so what we did was over the next 12 months we did multiple things as we reduced incentives we launched new products we increased fares we made sure ki aur naye drivers platform pe nahi aa rahe to every driver who is existing is working more he is earning more money all of those things to take the up their organic earnings while reducing the incentives we did but we gave them time four weeks was is one full year and nothing happened uber today also runs on a net inflows positive state no issues at all any anyway. in the case of misho we went to the customer and asked them ki aapko what do you want i said we need bulk assortments which means mujhe 1 kilo rice nahi khareedna hai aapko 40 kg rice khareedna hai we made that change we immediately got a lot of new things on the platform but it took customers one month to notice acha ye bhi aa gaya this is also what i can buy we did all of our marketing communications of course but the first one month is how the growth went up post that once the customer trial started once they got adjusted to what the platform's value proposition was everything started flowing smoothly other thing that you should see in as you see on the right hand side i think we have all seen it you know chip shortages factory slowdowns last year there was a lot of issue last two years because of covid i'll give you an example in the case of amazon in europe the time between june to august is the time when there are summer holidays june to august 
and the weather is great so a lot of people go out on holidays which means they are not working which means i don't have any supply on the platform and it doesn't matter what i do i can increase the prices i can do whatever that was will just not come onto the platform you hey nina wo wo share mein hi hai wo gaye hue hain ghumne gaye similarly in the case of uber a lot of people who work on the uber platform come from small towns and villages and they go back to their villages for the harvest season twice a year once around april once around october november or december somewhere around that time you will always face these cyclical challenges us time pe no matter how much money you are paying you will never be able to increase supply because that person has gone back to his village wo nahi aa raha kaam karne what will you do you need to ruthlessly prioritize which are your most important customers for example in the case of uber we knew we have to cater to the people who are going to offices in the morning so we made sure that all our drivers are sent that communication ke okay, morning peak mein aur evening peak mein jab log office ja rahe hain office se wapas aa rahe tab zarur kaam karo we made sure we adjusted our incentives and pricing according to that you have to prioritize which customers you serve afternoon mein bhi customer hai he wants to go to a movie but he can find an alternate solution someone who's going to office in the morning will find it much difficult much more difficult to find an alternate solution he has gotten used to going to office in an uber similarly with amazon there was a retail business there was a grocery business grocery business does not have any other way to get groceries delivered we have to deliver it for them so prioritize grocery business we made sure that everybody else on the retail business knows ki aapka package hum aaj deliver nahi kar payenge groceries are still available because that's a business that's dependent on amazon flex right the last is again personal leadership mantra something that i always believed in uh, your mistakes are always temporary but your growth is always permanent to mera team ke sath bahut clear understanding hota hai hamesha uh, and i've managed huge team anywhere between 10 people to 200 people तो मैं सबसे सिर्फ एक सिंपल चीज बोलता हूं एज लॉन्ग एज एंड पार्ट इन द लैंग्वेज शिट डजेंट हिट द रूफ व्हिच मींस बिजनेस विल नॉट कम टू अ स्टैंड स्टिल बिकॉज़ ऑफ योर मिस्टेक प्लीज गो अहेड एंड मेक दैट मिस्टेक यू विल लर्न आई विल एडवाइज यू आई विल गाइड यू बट आई विल नेवर रिप्लेस यू फॉर मेकिंग अ मिस्टेक यू विल नॉट लूज योर जॉब बट मेक श्योर दैट यू ओन दोस मिस्टेक्स यू लर्न फ्रॉम देम एंड यू डोंट रिपीट द सेम मिस्टेक ट्वाइस बिकॉज़ दैट्स एन इशू राइट as a leader what i can contribute to my team is these four parts and probably make note of it but thought lead govern enable by thought i mean providing thought leadership kya karna hai 6 mahine baad 12 mahine baad where do we see the business thought leadership wahan provide karna lead means specific initiatives which the team will not be able to focus on sub daily business to focus on but long term initiative pe koi focus nahi hai उस इनिशिएटिव को पकड़ के लीड करना एज अ लीडर यू आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इट गवर्नेंस वेर इन एवरी टू वीक्स और एवरी थ्री वीक्स यू स्टार्ट टॉकिंग टू योर टीम अच्छा काम कैसा चल रहा है वट आर द मेजर मेट्रिक्स यू आर यू डूइंग दैट्स गवर्न यू गवर्न द टीम एंड देन एनेबल वेर यू बेसिकली एनेबल देम टू परफॉर्म वट देर परफॉर्मिंग बाय रिमूविंग रोड ब्लॉक्स रिमूविंग यू नो प्रोसीजरल इशूज दैट्स वेर यू वर्क I think that's one place where my team has always, you know, appreciated me for. And this has helped really helped the team grow, and they always used to come back and you know give me that feedback also. If you're not getting leadership from me, or you're not setting the right governance, I usually used to give get feedback and then correct. But at least that is something that I've always focused on, making sure that my team has always the freedom to make mistakes, and if they're making mistakes, they're discussing it with me and learning. and not mistaking making the same mistake twice if you're creating something that is industry first or rather you're creating a new industry or a new segment you need to invest in both sides so for example when uber was first launched the concept of uber did not exist so you had to invest on rider incentives rider incentives both you to get both when blue smart was launched it did not have to invest in rider incentives a lot wo aa gaya kyunki aapne drivers leke aa gaye automatically demand will follow when you started zomato or food delivery 
the segment itself was new, right? You had to invest in both sides. But today, if you look at, there are a number of apps who are doing, you know, food delivery in a small geography in smaller towns. They don't have to invest on one side, on both sides. They have to invest only in one side. You get the gist? If you're opening an industry-defining project or your industry-defining business, which will create something new, then you invest in both sides. If not, if the in-segment already exists, you always spend on supply, never in demand. Demand will follow because demand will always see good. Paisa kis se lena? Paisa demand se lena. Usko dena kya hai? Good customer experience. Supply le hao, good customer experience manage kar lo, these people will always come and stay. The growth will always be slow. And that you can supercharge your fuel ki aapne bhaat zada rider in the center's job. If, you have, if I were to open a food delivery platform today, I would think about customer acquisition the last. I will see what I will see. Food delivery riders, uske baad restaurants. These are the supply side variables. Once I have that, automatically everything else will follow. This is, by the way, the same thing that even quick commerce followed, right? When they came in, when Big Basket came in, Big Basket now or Swiggy and Stamart, they invested on both sides. Zepto invested on both sides. But today, if you look at, say, Akshay Kalpa or Country Delight, they're not investing on both sides. They're only investing in supply. They're making sure that my supply is sorted. Customer will come. For that, you add ads for customer acquisition. You probably don't need to give as much incentives as you would give when you're creating something that is industry first. A large part of the disengagement can only be on, if you think first principle, two things. Either it's your price or it's your service. In 90% of the cases, at least from what I've seen, it's never the price. Because if a customer has come to you, a product used earlier, he started using it because he was okay with the price to pay. Unless or until you've gotten him at a very low price and then now suddenly you've increased price. That's a whole different question. But if someone has been using your product for a long time, it's almost always about the service. And that's where I feel talking to the customer and understanding where that service gap is critical. We used to do that all the time. As even as a business head in Uber, every month I used to spend one week where I used to solve 20 customer tickets every day. One day driver, one day rider. Every day, 20 tickets. It was invaluable. Because it was invaluable because it taught me what the actual service gaps are. Right? Presence of seat belts in the rear is something that customers highlighted. We never do. Seat covers hone chahiye, but usse aapka seat belt you know, gets hidden, you can't put it in the rear seat. Again, things that customers come. Presence of a fire extinguisher in the cars is necessary, and some cars don't follow that. Again, customers want it. Always talk to your customers, they'll tell you the service gap. The second thing is, second thing that always impacts in terms of customer service, uh, note there is consistency. From a SaaS perspective, particularly, if you're providing a software and if you're not a software as a service and you're not consistent in what you're delivering, that can always you know, get a customer disengaged. Because for someone, their entire business is dependent on what you're providing, right? It's a critical no. That's the reason he's with you. But if the consistency fails, that person will never be able to scale up. If someone scale up, my consistency is not going he'll never sit up. That's where it picks up. We initially think that we will give a better price than the retail. What is our first technique? Sir, you are going to leave, you are going to 100 rupees, you are going to 90 rupees. Right? Customer discount. It might work in some cases. In most of the cases, it won't. And it is never sustainable. You can't discount someone to give a retail. It always has to be about it always has to be about कि उस कस्टमर की नीड क्या है इन टर्म्स ऑफ सर्विस एज आई सेड अर्लियर आल्सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ कंसिस्टेंसी ऑफ दैट सर्विस क्वालिटी एंड कंसिस्टेंसी मैंने अपनी एक्सपीरियंस में जितना भी देखा है कस्टमर रिटेंशन इन एवरी केस कैन बी डिफरेंट उसके फैक्टर्स वेरिएबल्स डिफरेंट हो सकते हैं बट अल्टीमेटली इट बॉइल्स डाउन टू द वन वेरी सिंपल थिंग कस्टमर जस्ट एक्सपेक्टेशन से आपकी प्लेटफार्म पे आया था क्या आपने वो एक्सपेक्टेशन पूरी की है और अगर नहीं की है तो गैप कहां है product quality, mein hai, service quality, mein hai, service consistency. Mein hai. Let me give you an example. Very simple. Actual service industries example. Hota. You call up any credit card service provider 
and you call up an american express contact center your experience is standard deviations apart american express ka customer experience is through the roof brilliant and that's the reason they have the best attention in the market because the service quality is the best in terms of the reward points and everything they're not the best in the market ever kabhi bhi nahi hai but customer when he comes to that usko ye pata hai maine jab american express ka card liya to mujhe pata hai ki iska reward points so acche nahi but mujhe pata hai ki customer service bahut achhi hai aur ye unhone promise kiya hai now the only reason for me to disengage is agar wo promise they break either in terms of not consistently delivering it or not delivering the customer promise at all waisa aaj tak nahi hua so every time a customer comes you should ask quality of service mein issue tha a consistency of service mein issue tha and agar wo answer ab aapko milta hai aap usko solve karo don't try and solve the price problem because that will always be on system so you can't predict what the competition will do and that is where if you have heard a lot of these companies sab bolte hain na aajkal customer first and not competition first that's where this stems from there are a lot of outcomes not just here even elsewhere that you can never really predict if i change my incentives today or if i change my pricing of a product today, how will competition react i have no clue right how much is the customer ready to pay i'm not sure at least not till i've done experiments with it so a lot of these decisions used to be experiments but keeping the customer at the center of it not the competition so customer hand cust competition handling kabhi nahi socha tha please maine apne experience mein have never bothered about it. you always focus on how can you solve for the customer jo maine initially examples bhi liye the when i was trying to grow my platform i was learning from what my competition was doing i was not handling them in any way mujhe koi farak nahi padta mujhe unke liye kuch nahi karna mere ko ye samajhna hai ki wo aisa kya karte hain jisse customer bahut khush hai aur kya main wo kar sakta hu मैं अपने कस्टमर की कौन सी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व कर सकता हूँ कि वो मेरे से भी खुश हो इसके लिए मैं जाके कस्टमर से पूछूंगा कि मैं आपके लिए क्या करूँ आई विल नॉट सॉल्व फॉर वॉट माई कॉम्पिटिशन इज डूइंग आई सॉल्व फॉर वॉट माई कस्टमर वॉन्ट्स द कॉम्पिटिशन माइट भी डूइंग इट माइट नॉट भी डूइंग इट सेपरेट स्टोरी हाउ डू फोकस ऑन प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी और टीम ग्रोथ आई थिंक दोज आर टू सेपरेट थिंग्स दर्ज नथिंग टू डू विद टीम ग्रोथ दर्ज बिजनेस ग्रोथ एंड दर्ज बिजनेस प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी ऑफकोर्स वन बिजनेस ग्रोथ हैपन टीम ग्रोथ हैपन ऑन द साइड नाउ how do you focus on one versus the other there are two aspects when you are trying to create a new industry or a new business you will always focus on growth aap industry define kar rahe ho na food delivery define kar rahe ho ride sharing define kar rahe ho you will always focus on growth of course depending on that whether you have money that is available right to invest in both sides of the marketplace in a lot of cases both sides of the marketplace money available nahi hota राइट है ना बोल तो आपको क्या होता है तब आप सोचते हैं अच्छा ब्रूटल डिसीजन लेना चाहिए दीज डिसीजन एज अ लीडर आर नेवर टफ नेवर इजी सॉ वेरी डिफिकल्ट क्योंकि आप किसी को कम्युनिकेट कर रहे हो कि यू लूज अलाउ यू यू नो हैव टू कंटेंट विद प्रॉब्लम सम टाइम जहां आपको बस जॉब नहीं है आई एम कटिंग डाउन ऑन द टीम बिजनेस को स्केल बैक कर रहे हैं नॉट जस्ट यू एज अ एम्प्लॉई बट इवन suppliers and customers everyone you know suffers now when the business shrinks there are two things that i always feel we should be honest and we should be empathetic you cannot beat around the bush in such cases and i have gone through these cycles so many times at uber and amazon and mishu every time there's a business scale down it is difficult for you to communicate but it is much more difficult to the person to whom it is happening in those cases always be very honest with why you are doing this honest with your feedback and then be very empathetic a lot many mere sath aisa hua tha where the person said so can you extend my uh, you know uh, you, you can you let go of the joining bonus that you gave so we had to let a person go one year had not been completed so we had to return back his joining bonus in the grand scheme of things that 1 lakh rupee probably does not impact me but for him it is very important i went ahead and took that special approvals ki bhai we should let go of this right some of these things are super important because when an employee leaves 
knowing that in the worst time you took care of him he will always be loyal to you no matter where he meets you he will always be an ambassador not just for the company but also for you as a person which means tomorrow if you go out in the market and you want to hire a team you'll find it much easier because there'll be a lot more people who say he is a fair man anubhav is a fair guy he has always been honest he has always understood my pain those are the two principles Thank you.